Hello, I'm going to read the story, Mom Gets a Job. Fozzie Bear was a happy-go-lucky kind of guy. He liked his life just fine the way it was. Every morning, he would sit at the table with Mom and Pop and read aloud to them from the back of the banana binky cereal box. He liked riding the school bus with all his friends. On show-and-tell days, he loved to see what everybody had. And he always liked trying out his new jokes on the bus, too. He even liked school. His teacher, Mr. Bumper, was the best in the whole school. He also told terrific jokes. Fozzie liked coming home after school, too. Mom would always be waiting for him with a hug and a kiss, some cookies and milk, and all sorts of questions about the day. At dinner, he liked swapping jokes with Pop. After dinner was bath time and nobody scrubbed his back for him like Mom. But best of all, he liked snuggling up next to Mom while she read him a bedtime story or two or three. One Monday at school, Mr. Bumper made an announcement. A week from this Friday is the Big Buffo Talent Roundup. Tryouts are tomorrow at recess. After class, Mr. Bumper said to Fozzie, We will see you at the tryouts, Fozzie. You bet you will, said Fozzie. I'm going to be the biggest and the bofiest of all. Fozzie couldn't wait to get home and tell Mom. Hey, hey, Mom, Fozzie burst into the front door, barely stopping to catch his breath. Do I have a surprise for you? But Mom didn't quite hear him. First, I have a surprise for you, she said. I got a job. A job, Fozzie gulped. Working for Bear, Bear, Bear and Bryant, attorneys to the stars. But you already have a job, Fozzie said in a hurt little voice, being my mom. Of course I do, and that will always be my favorite and most important job. But now you're in school most of the day, and you don't need me as much as you used to. Besides, we could use the extra money. Aren't you happy for me? Sure, Fozzie said, but he dragged himself upstairs to his bedroom without even telling Mom his surprise. Suddenly, it just didn't seem so terrific anymore. On the school bus the next morning, Kermit noticed that Fozzie's face was about as long as a rainy Saturday afternoon. What's wrong, Fozzie? he asked. Everything, Fozzie welled. My mom got a job. Hey, that's not so bad. My mom went back to work, and it didn't ruin my life. Sure, at first I was a little upset, but after a while I got used to it. Most of our moms work, said Piggy, and you don't see us moping around, do you? I guess not, but Fozzie did not sound one bit convinced. During recess that day, Fozzie went to the auditions for the Big Buffio Talent Roundup. He told a couple of pickle jokes, but they went pretty sour. He told a couple of elephant jokes, but they were too heavy. It was lucky for him that Mr. Bumper was one of the judges. Fozzie's just having a bad day because his mom is going to work, Mr. Bumper explained to the other judges. He's really a funny guy. They all smiled understandingly. Okay, Fozzie, said Mr. Bumper. After the audition, you're in the show. Be here next Friday at four o'clock with costume and props and cheer up. It's not the end of the world. That night, as mom was tucking him in, Fozzie told her about the Big Buffio Talent Roundup. Gee, I hope I can make it, she said. Fozzie frowned. He didn't like the way that sounded. And he also didn't like the way mom looked with those silly curlers all over her head. And worst of all, she re had read him only one bedtime story because she needed her sleep. When Fozzie woke up in the next morning, mom had already left for the first day on the job. Pop was running around like a chicken trying to get across an eight line, eight line highway. His tie was all crooked. He burned the toast. He laid out the strangest school clothes for Fozzie, and he poured orange juice instead of milk all over Fozzie's banana binkies. That day at school, it seemed like everything went wrong. At snack time, Fozzie discovered that Pop had packed him soggy breadsticks instead of his crispy carrot sticks that Mom usually made for him. And at lunchtime, he found out that Pop had clean forgotten to give him his lunch money. So he had to borrow it from Mr. Bumper. It's all mom's fault, he grumbled. If she hadn't gone to work, none of this would be happening. 
That day, he came home from school to find their neighbor, Mrs. Kodiak, standing by the front door where Mom usually waited for him. There was no hug. There was no kiss. There were cookies, which Mrs. Kodiak had baked, just for him, but somehow they didn't taste as good as Mom's. And Mrs. Kodiak sat there knitting and humming and didn't even ask how his day had gone. So Fozzie went up to his room and tried to work out a routine for the Big Boffia Talent Roundup. But he just didn't feel like it. He didn't feel funny or clever or entertaining at all. He just felt upset. That night at dinner, neither Fozzie nor Pop had any jokes to swap. Mom had come home from work excited from her first day, but so tired that she had to sit down, put her feet up instead of making dinner. Dinner was leftovers and they were not very tasty. At bath time, Mom asked Fozzie to please scrub his own back because she had paperwork to do. And then mom fell asleep right in the middle of reading Fozzie his bedtime story. This is yucky, Fozzie said to himself. As the week wore on into the next, Fozzie and Pop managed to work out a routine for getting ready. The night before, Fozzie would lay out the clothes for the next day. Pop would pack his snack and lunch money. Evenings were a little better. Mom and Pop took turns making dinner. Mom wasn't coming home quite so tired, but she was sometimes so busy talking about Bear, Bear, Bear and Bryant that she completely forgot to ask Fozzie about school. After school on Monday, Fozzie went over to Kermit's house. Kermit was showing Fozzie his juggling act for the talent roundup, but Fozzie was too busy feeling sorry for himself to watch. Having a working mother is a big drag, Fozzie sighed. I wish everything could go back to the way it was. Don't feel that way, said Kermit. Be proud of your mom. Being a mother and going to work is like juggling. It takes a lot of practice, and everybody in the family has to cheer her on. Just then, Kermit dropped one of the oranges. Fozzie picked it up and handed it to him, and then began watching more closely. Juggling is pretty tricky business, Fozzie said thoughtfully. And for the first time, he began to think not just for him, about himself, but about his mom and how hard being a working mother must be. The next afternoon, Fozzie worked on his routine in front of his bedroom mirror. He decided that in honor of his friend Kermit, who had gotten him out of his slump, he would tell nothing but green jokes. What's green and flies, he asked. Super pickle. Waka waka. He even made himself laugh. Then on Thursday, Mom asked Fozzie to pick out a story to read. Let's skip reading tonight, he told her. You look pretty tired and I need to work on my routine. Which jokes are you going to tell, she asked. Mom knew almost all Fozzie's jokes. Come to the show tomorrow and find out, he said mysteriously. The next day was the talent roundup. Fozzie was backstage and he was beginning to worry. As he peered out through the curtains, he saw Pop but next to Pop, there was an empty seat. Mom's not coming, he whispered sadly to himself. She's too busy at work. You're on next, Fozzie, Mr. Bumper called. Break a leg. But to Fozzie, it felt more like his heart was going to break. Still, he knew the show must go on. Fozzie started his act. Hiya, folks, he said. What do you call a cow that eats grass? The audience waited. A, Fozzie faltered. A, he couldn't remember the punchline for his first joke. Fozzie began to sweat. Then he saw someone running frantically down the aisle. Psst, whispered a familiar voice, a lawnmower. It was mom's voice. His mom had made it. A lawnmower, Fozzie said, and the audience laughed hard. He was a hit. After the show, mom and pop came backstage and gave Fozzie big hugs and kisses. You were so funny, they told him. I was afraid you weren't coming, Fozzie said to Mom. Don't you know, Mom said, that being your mom is the most important job I have. I love you, Fozzie Bear, and I wouldn't have missed this for the world. I'm proud of you. Thanks, Fozzie said shyly, and I'm proud of you too. Then they all went out to the fanciest restaurant in town and had a delicious dinner. Fozzie ordered all his favorite things, and for dessert, he ordered a triple banana split. That was so big, he had to share it with Mom and Pop. When they got home, Fozzie put on his pajamas and Mom read him a story. 
this time, neither one of them could quite stay awake until the last page. <laughs> the end. Thank you.